Hello, everyone. Welcome to Dragonfly Strategist Insights. We're looking forward to hosting you today and to talking to Elise Deep, our Vice President of Revenue Strategy. Are you there yet, Elise? I am here. Awesome. Great, great, great. Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Wish it could be in person. Yes, I do wish it could be a <laughs> A little bit cloudy in Dallas so, today, but you know, we're hanging in there, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's sunny and beautiful here in New York City. And uh, later today, I'll go for a walk in Central Park and uh, with my mask on and uh, social distance. And uh, it seems to be pretty easy these days. There aren't too many people out. Um, so tell me, you know, first of all, uh, you know, we're humans first. So how are you? How is your family? Uh, how are things in Dallas? Dallas is doing pretty well. Um, my daughter is actually finishing her finals today. So for college, this is her junior year. And, um, you know, basically when she left college, it was for spring break, not realizing she wasn't going to go back. So it's been interesting. Uh, we got a call a couple of, you know, over the weekend saying, okay, whatever you do, you have to come get her stuff. And so we're going to have to pack up the car and drive to Missouri and uh, bring her back home. And, and we're not even sure if she's going to be going back in the fall, right? Because colleges are now announcing that uh, fall semester may be stay at home as well. Yeah, but yeah. Otherwise, we're healthy and we're safe. So that's, that's really all you can ask for and, and uh, just enjoying the time as a family together. Awesome. Well, I'm glad to hear that. So I want to talk today with you, uh, you know, obviously we're talking about recovery. We've seen some stats, even Travel Zoo um, just uh, sent out some stats just a few minutes ago, actually, about some recovery and some things, success stories that they've had around the world, um, you know, pushing uh, demand, trying to drive some incremental demand. Um, we've seen from G-Commerce some stats on uh, and Duetto stats on, uh, you know, growing. Um, we had a great um, post by uh, Crystal at Ideas regarding revenue management um, in this time of a crisis and recovery, right? So my first question, you know, I've heard, I've been on, we all have been trying to attend, um, you know, lots of different sessions uh, to and read as much as we can to keep up with what's happening in this in this changing environment. And, you know, I've heard in the past couple of weeks, a, a few people say that really revenue management isn't really that relevant um, right now, uh, that we need to be more focused in other areas because we can just set our price and forget it because there isn't enough demand to worry about it. Um, so I'm just curious, do you think revenue management is relevant right now? I, I would say it's extremely relevant. And I, I think, you know, whether you're opening your hotel back up or you've been open and you need to ramp up, uh, we really need to take a step back from the business and create what our new normal is going to look like for commercial strategy. And really, that's going to take everyone working together. And I believe in revenue management. I, I always speak to the fact that we're very collaborative in our efforts. And we have to work with all departments because I do think, you know, we are the conduit for planning and communication. We understand the math. We understand the demand. And I think, you know, there's really going to have to be a starting place uh, for that conversation. And it's going to be around forecasting and budgeting. And I know there's a lot of ambiguity about what the future holds. And I got to tell you, I probably feel like I should uh, use my best tool, which is the magic eight ball. And it probably would be more accurate than what I have now. <laughs> <laughs> right. But the conversation needs to be started. And it really needs to look at what the rest of the year we think it's going to be and into 2021. And as I start forecasting, I understand that it's a sliding scale, right? Because everything is changing daily, but we have to start somewhere. And I would recommend we always be conservative. I can say that uh, STR just announced what yesterday that we have sold over 10 million rooms. Uh, and that's a big deal for us in the United States because we haven't been there since uh, this whole thing started. So yeah, understanding certainly uh, the forecast. And I think once you put that together, having a conversation with operations because not only has our revenues changed our costs have changed right and that conversation with finance and operations is you know what's our cost per occupied room when we're renting those rooms does it cost more money to do housekeeping do we have um different numbers of, of people at the front desk because of social distancing and how we check people in or do we not check people in anymore because we're not doing face to face so what do those costs look like? Because they're going to be adjustments when we're doing group displacements and looking at you know, overall profitability. And then 
we need to have conversations with our sales teams, right? We've had a lot yeah. of changes yeah. in our groups. You know, everybody canceled basically. All these groups canceled from March through, you know, we've seen a lot of it into July. And, mm -hmm. you know, when you're rebooking for those future dates, uh, your groups are now asking for the same rates that they had. They're probably looking at attrition changes, changes in cancellation policies, and other concessions. We need to make decisions as a team on, you know, can we do that by season? Um, what, is, what does it look like? Because we want to keep that business. But if they're mm -hmm. asking for same dates that are already booked, can we be creative in moving those groups around and giving them what they need to be successful, but we also need to prepare our sales team so they can be, you know, communicate, um, you know, what we can do for the customer. Mm -hmm. we're, mm -hmm. we're, also, we're also entering RFP season. I know that, you know, it's, it's already started. It's, I, I don't know where, you know, the spring went. Uh, yeah, obviously That's interesting that you, yeah. that you say that, Elise, because, um, you know, I was watching uh, GBTA interviewing Arnie Sorensen, um, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, GBTA is really pushing for our existing rates just to be extended through 2021, because, Right now, there may not be a BT person on site to negotiate with. Um, and, you know, really, corporate accounts, how are they going to guarantee any sort of volume or even have a volume discussion? I mean, I think right now, they really don't know when they're going to start traveling in full force again and what cities might be off limits. I mean, New York City might be off limits for a while for some people, but it might be fine for them to go to Minneapolis or Dallas, right? So, you know, it's. I think it's... Um, I felt like it was wise of GPTA to, to um, push that forward. Um, but, you know, do you think there's going to be pressure um, perhaps to, to, you know, lower those rates as we get further into the year and people start coming back? I mean, what do you, what do you think that's going to look like? Because rate season completely, as you, the word you like to use, foobard. Um, <laughs> this year right <laughs> it, is. it is it is and i think you know um when you look at corporate travel and you mentioned you know no one can you know when you do set pricing it's based on a certain volume um so mm -hmm. maybe there is more opportunity to go back to dynamic pricing uh if you have a company that doesn't already have it because if it's a set percentage off whatever your bar of the day is then in case gosh, gosh forbid, or that there's a second round of this um, and pricing does get uh, compressed, that they're always getting the best value. And you really yep. want to yep. talk to that if there is somebody that you can negotiate with or have that conversation, because again, we don't know who's been furloughed, who's available. Um, and so, you know, they're just, again, it might be just easier to extend those price points uh, in Lanyon or whatever your RFP yeah. tool is through 2021. Yeah, so, so, you know, from your perspective, what markets do you think are going to recover? What segments, I guess, are going to recover first and, and why? So I do think the states that probably weren't hit as hard um, have the least number of cases, right? Also, the states that typically open first, you know, I'm in Texas, it's been open for a couple of weeks. Uh, it's interesting, I look at the freeways and it's almost like rush hour is back to normal. Um, yeah. now, mm -hmm. now, restaurants and, and things like that are still at 25% uh, occupancy, but you do see that people are going back to work. So um, I do believe, you know, and again, those, ty those types of states where they're warmer, um, I do think have the opportunity to recover first. Um, also, yeah, I think they've, we've seen some pick up at beach destinations as well, you know, as things start opening up, obviously, you know, people wanting to get out from their uh, quarantine home, right? Um, so, but uh, what were you going to say um, further well, about was, market? Uh, yeah, yeah, so I was just going to say destination properties. So I do believe yeah. destination properties with outdoor activities are going to have the opportunity to recover first. Um, having that outdoor space uh, allows for the transient leisure guests to be more comfortable to go ahead and continue with social distancing. And so, you know, if, if you're one of those, you know, fortunate uh, locations, making sure that your content is updated, it looks like wide open spaces, um, because I do mm -hmm. believe that, um, you know, certainly transient leisure, we want to travel again. Everybody has been stuck inside for months. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So. so what about from a segmentation perspective? I mean, uh, a group is, that, that's a tough one. Like, uh, we don't even know exactly how we're going to 
manage it, right, um, in the meeting space and all of those. And I'm going to talk to Paige Dunn next Thursday a lot more about, you know, the sales side and the group side and contracts and, you know, what we're going to have to do from concessions and that type of thing. But, I mean, from a, a pure segment standpoint and, you know, what do you think is going to come back? What are you seeing, um, you know, start to come back right now? So again, transient leisure is going to be the first that comes back. I think from a group perspective, um, I would focus on inside your own state, like state associations. Um, if you've got groups where people have to get on planes, um, you know, I think convention uh, planners are going to have a hard time pressing people if they don't feel comfortable getting on a plane in the immediate future, they're not going to, right? So yeah. if you have those state associations or corporate uh, businesses that are bringing in people who are inside the state and can drive to your hotel, uh, those are the people I would certainly have the sales team talk to and secure. Okay, so kind of switching over um, to technology, um, do you think revenue management systems are relevant right now? And if so, um, what are the types of things that you need to be doing um, to make sure that they are dialed in uh, going forward? Right. And so, you know, we're fortunate to, to work with um, many clients who have in our revenue management system. And, um, you know, I think that they're extremely helpful, even right now. I know that there are people who, who believe that you're just going to set your rates and, and step away. And that's not at all the case. There's a lot that goes into strategy. And I know that, you know, a lot of the technology platforms have made changes to their algorithms to understand what's going on right now. Um, and there are a lot of different types of best practices, like, you know, making sure that you change your cost to walk, right? Your cost to walk and overbooking are set on a, a healthy 12 month rolling ADR, which is not necessarily the case. And you might not even have those rates going forward for the immediate future. But I certainly would look at changing restrictions and releasing restrictions, changing any type of pricing around rules that accelerate um, upgrade or offset charges to your room types. Um, certainly I would take out any of the special events that have been impacted. So if normally your Easter is, is a special event and very strong, um, you know, those types of things uh, go into the calculations for future and, and you're hoping next Easter looks better than this Easter. So you wanna make sure that's sure. system, right? And then reload your forecasts because again, the forecasting I know you're, it's gonna be up in the air and you're, it's your best guesswork. Um, but it's certainly going to be better than the budget you loaded back in October, right? And, mm -hmm. you know, certainly change the math and in, in any type of group evaluation um, tool that you're using, making sure that those costs, maybe the, the bandwidth from which you, you book, you know, a group, that you might take it a little bit lower. But again, I would take a look at, at all of those types of settings where you're, you're using your system and it's helping you create um, the best price points. They need to be... Mm -hmm. Reevaluated, but again, mm -hmm. they're going to help you understand um, things are turning very quickly, right? Uh, mm -hmm. We just saw in the last two weeks. I was looking at um, statistics around Lyft, and two weeks ago, Lyft was down ninety three percent domestically in the U.S., and this week it's down seventy three percent. Now I know that's it's still down a lot. However, right. um, it's changing very quickly, and I think you know. Again, looking at the booking pace, um, I understand seasonality and booking pace is so different today than it was, um, you know, three months ago, right? Uh, people are making decisions to travel today for today. They're listening to the news. They're understanding what executive orders have been handed out or revised by the governors in, inside of their state or the state that they might want to mm -hmm. visit. So this is, everything is changing so quickly being kept up to date with what's going on your new, in the news is, is a part of your job. But the system, if you have one, is there to help you understand if they see a change in booking, booking pace and, and are able to you know, help you with the strategy very quickly, right? It's gonna turn mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So uh, switching a little bit again, um, and I just wanna remind everyone, if you want to ask questions, um, please, feel free to send them in chat. You can send them to the panelists. You can um, send them to Nicole Tomato, um, one of our leaders in revenue here at Dragonfly. She's monitoring chat and she's going to be 
sending those off to us. We'd love to have some interactivity with you, uh, but I have a lot of questions for Elise if you don't have any. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, we'd, we'd love to hear what your questions are. Um, so Elise, um, I know in your past life, you worked um, for a company that was mid-scale and did uh, a lot of drive markets, right? Um, so you know a heck of a lot. Uh, about that. And I think, you know, I don't because I, my past is more in urban areas, cities and luxury um, boutique, that kind of thing, right? So we didn't necessarily uh, push the drive market a lot, except for after 9-11, <laughs> you know, there were, there were times that we did, um, but um, it wasn't something that was an ongoing uh, focus for us. So what are some thoughts around how can hotels that aren't, you know, economy mid-scale uh, really draw in that drive market? What do they need to be thinking about? What do they need to be doing? What are some of the opportunities um, for them to be able to touch that local area that can drive to their destination? You know, and I, and I think it's interesting, I, and I look forward to, to seeing different statistics about um, average, you know, how many miles somebody is willing to go, right? Because people used to fly before. Mm -hmm. And, you know, AAA will tell you, oh, people are willing to travel, say, 200 miles. But you got to wonder if it's going to be 80 miles. So I think there's a lot more that's going to come out um, as far as customer sentiment. However, I do know mm -hmm. that that opportunity for a staycation, um, whether it's mid-scale or a luxury resort, is going to be there, right? And, you know, people, because they won't be flying and they're going to be driving, it, you know, it'll save money towards the overall cost for a vacation. And we know that everybody's disposable income has been uh, impacted during this time, right? And so, and also people will feel more comfortable driving versus flying. But I do believe communicating with websites that, communi that cater to the drive market, AAA, AARP, military and their veterans, uh, pet websites, making sure that your uh, content is loaded, that you have links to those websites, um, also, I do believe that if you, as uh, certainly in, in a drive market, there are a lot of hotels that count on walk-in business. I don't think that, I would certainly be conservative about that as your pickup pace, only because people are going to plan a little bit more. They want to see in your content that you're safe, that you're open, right? Not everybody's open mm -hmm. yet, and um, that you're clean. So if you've updated any type of housekeeping, uh, if you've put in different signage around social distancing, making sure that that is visible on your website, certainly on your mobile app. I think, you know, we've seen mobile apps grow in contribution to reservations. So making sure all that content is, is there. And then, you know, I mentioned pets, right? So if people are driving, they're typically wanting to bring their pets. And so, uh, you know, in my prior experience, we learned that uh, the customer with the pets is a very strong customer. Uh, there's a lot out there, uh, but they're also going to be able to save money and not boarding their pets, uh, which is can be very expensive. And so if you have mm -hmm. a pet policy, making sure you communicate that. If you don't have a pet policy, uh, you might want to change your mind on that. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think that's interesting about pets. You know, is it anecdotally, uh, we're... Uh, talking to a movie company here, we are getting ready to move cross country, actually. Um, and uh, yeah, COVID got to us. Sorry, guys, I am leaving New York City, if you didn't know that. <laughs> I will be back a lot. I have lots of clients here, and Nicole is based here. So um, we still have a presence um, and a, a you know, local office here. But um, I'm moving to Colorado. I'm moving to the smallest town I've ever lived in, in my life. Um, and um, the interesting thing about that is that we have a moving company that, you know, some of those of you who might know me and know my background know I've, I've moved a few times in my life. And so this moving company has moved us a couple times and we contacted them and they're here in New York and uh, they said, well, you know, we're actually driving trucks here from other parts of the country because we have so many people leaving, but nobody's coming back. Um, so people aren't moving here right now. I don't know why. Um, and, um, the, and I found that interesting. I'm like, well, you know, maybe hotels can figure out how to get those people moving out of here. But then I'm like, uh, do they want us? Does anyone want anyone from New York in their hotel? <laughs> you know? So it's, it's, um, it is interesting. It's, a, it's, and if you would have told me on my last trip when I was, uh, I was at the Navis conference in San Antonio, that was my last trip um, in early March. 
And if you would have told me we would be talking about how important it is to put your housekeeping process on your website, I would have thought you were crazy. <laughs> um, how things change, right? Um, it's, it's, um, this, it, this is something that's going to be with us for a while. Um, and, you know, just like we still have the TSA at airports, there are things that hotels are going to have to do differently um, forever, essentially, because of what's happened. Um, because now we, now we know what a pandemic is, and before it was all theory, right? Um, so, at least I know, you, you know, when we were at uh, the data conference last year, too, I remember, uh, and also at HSMAI Rock. Uh, them talking about a black swan event. Well, unless there's a black swan event, then yeah. this is our forecast, right? Um, of course, this is a black swan event, the worst black swan event um, any of us have ever been part of. But looking back at 9-11 and looking back at 2008, um, <clears throat> what were some of the good things that you saw hotels and revenue leaders do then? And what were some of the not so good kind of no-nos that you saw um, and, and, you know, talk to us a little bit about that to see what could be applicable to today. So, you know, if I don't mention it once during this, I'm, I'm mentioning it at least mentally a hundred times. Uh, don't drop your rate. Like, I, I, I think it's always interesting because we, we did it after 9-11 and uh, we said, don't do that again. And we did it again in 2008. And, uh, we seem to never learn our lesson, and I, you know, um, I would definitely say if somebody is is afraid to travel, dropping your rate ten dollars or a hundred dollars is not going to create demand. It it just is right. Not. I mean, dropping rate does not drive demand. It no, just it does doesn't. Not. Now you can, you know, in a market like New York, we're all about stealing share from other hotels when we're at ninety five percent here most of the time, right? And so you see, you play those games and. Um, not saying that that's necessarily the right thing to do, but as a market, we do it a lot here in New York. Um, but I mean, there's no, there's no share to steal. Like it's, there's, so, you know, and, and, and dropping rate does not therefore result in demand and Spirit Airlines, I think it was Spirit, um, that, or maybe it was Allegiant. I, I think it was Spirit though, that dropped sure. their rate like to $19 and yeah. nobody booked it. No, because again, it, if, if you're afraid that you're going to get sick and, you know, not come out on the other side of this, a hundred dollars is not worth your life. And that's really what it comes down to. And I think, you mm -hmm. know, the other opportunity that we had in both of those, you know, situations, um, downturns is, you know, the hotels went back to the OTAs and started giving them, um, the best rates, right. And the best offers and the deepest offers. Uh, what I can tell you right now that's been unique to either one of those events now is you've seen that marketing spend for the OTAs is down, right? Google's talking about um, how little spend. All of a sudden, our, uh, our, we owning our names has come to the top we, you know, for our organic search because we're not bidding against anybody. And so I would really hope that as we partner with the OTAs because they are, are you know, distribution, that you remember parity with your own website, right? We've, we've had a lot of inroads into Book Direct, but we've spent a lot of marketing dollars around Book Direct. Um, remember, you know, the, the strides we've, we've made uh, up to this point and, and just be, again, continue with parity. And then I would say the one thing that I saw, certainly after 9-11, but even after 2008, um, and certainly now is, our industry, which, you know, again, it's unique to us because we're the hospitality industry, but we do come together. And so when you see the taglines of in it together, um, we're in it together all the time, like whether we're facing a hurricane or a fire or gosh, you know, any type of, of natural event, even uh, as mm -hmm. a community and not just a city, but as a community, as an industry. Um, we know how to support each other and support the communities in which we live. And so I, I seeing that even today, um, it just gives me chills to see what we do for other people. And there has been, you know, obviously our industry has been hit really, really hard. And, um, but to see the hospitality groups that are on Facebook and LinkedIn and seeing how everybody's reaching out to everybody, um, 
it is always, you know, gives me such a sense of pride that, you know, I've been in this industry for 30 years and, and I continue to be passionate about it because the people that we work with um, are passionate, not about just what we do, um, but the fact that we get to serve others. So, yeah, yeah. I just saw a question come in and it uh, basically says, would you recommend hotels consider renegotiating OTA contracts and who has the upper hand in the negotiation right now? Thank you, oh. Stephen Rubin, for that question. What do you think, Elise? <laughs> you know, I think it's always a good time to renegotiate contracts, to be honest. Um, <laughs> so I don't know how popular that makes me with, with you know, certain vendors, but, um, you know, I do believe it, 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 we are, um, Customer acquisition, acquisition has, has been um, just on this onwards, upward slope and has been really difficult uh, for hoteliers to battle, right? And so that's why I go back to, you know, don't, let's not go back to giving them the best rates and so on and so forth. But if your contract is certainly up for renewal, um, you know, I think that there's brands out there who have, um, and it's become very public about what they have negotiated. Um, so if your contract's certainly up for renewal, you always want to go back to the well and see what you can do better because, you know, your bottom line has also been impacted, right? And um, whether you're adding cleaning costs or you can only take groups now, you know, at a certain capacity because you have to have so many feet sitting at a table in a conference room. I mean, there's our new normal is is what we have to look for. And, and again, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. keeping, keeping our, our people employed is, is important as well. And our hotels open. Yeah. 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 Agreed. So as we come out of this, um, I know we spend a lot of time with the hotels that we uh, do, you do revenue services for. We spend a lot of time talking to ownership usually. Um, yes. And there's going to be a lot, of pressure, obviously. I mean, owners has uh, you know their their revenues have gone significantly down, and mm -hmm. um, you know the the personal toll on the employees is is enormous. And um, you know there are owners out there who care tremendously, you know, about what what it's doing um, to all the people, um, and are focused on that. But you know the reality is they're they're losing money too, right? And they've got mortgages to pay. Um, do you have any tips for? how we manage um, to ownership when we come out on the other side of this, because obviously we're not meeting 2020 expectations. So, you know, how do we navigate changing those expectations and how do we communicate to ownership um, without, you know, we, we I, I would say the, I mean, honesty is gonna be really important, right? But I mean, what are, what are the tips um, for communicating uh, to ownership? I think for us, it's really about, um, we love data, right? That's what we do. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I always speak to those of you who know me about consumable data. And, and it's even more important, mm -hmm. not just the people that we talk to day to day, but um, we may be talking to, to our owners now more than ever. Uh, but certainly understanding what data is important because you could look at the news, you could look at the stock market, um, you could look at one source of data and the sky is falling and another source of data on the exact same day that says recovery is right around the corner, right? And so you really have to um, make sure that you fact check everything. That's really important right now. Um, I wouldn't take one source of data and, and that is what you run with. Make sure you temper the message and um, make sure that you understand not just the math that's out there that says Lyft is up, you know, 20% two weeks ago or that we're still selling more rooms than we have in six weeks, um, but understand, you know, the stay at home orders, right? And you really have to be in command of, of what if scenarios. Um, again, mm -hmm. looking in the crystal ball is, is hard, um, but you need to be fluid with your forecast. You need to be conservative. Um, every owner is gonna look for that silver lining and they're hoping that it's tomorrow, right? Um, but you need to make sure that you are able to show, show the math, um, make sure that the data points are concise uh, don't get lost in the data. Don't get lost in 500 points of data because, you know, I can, I can do that too. Um, but make sure that you know what's important to them um, and what's really important to the business, right? Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. everybody's trying to forecast so, the, the turn. Um, 
We yeah, just yeah, yeah. really knows when that is. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, so are there opportunities you think that the really smart, you know, rock star revenue leaders are going to take advantage of right now? Um, you know, what, what are our most talented people doing right now? Well, you know, I think there, again, there's a lot of podcasts, webinars like ours. Um, you want to make uh -huh. sure that you're, you're staying engaged with your community. Um, take the time to develop yourself. I would say, you know, HSMI, MAI, sorry. Um, you know, they're offering like a 50% discount on certification for business acumen. And it used to be in a group setting and now you can do it online. Um, I think mm -hmm. also, you know, one of the things that I really want to stress for for the revenue management community is do not just set your rates and leave it. Um, pricing really is going to be fluid with the news and the booking pace. Uh, what you thought was mm -hmm. season is, is not season, right? And mm -hmm. um, I would also get engaged more in the digital side because revenue management, like I said, isn't just distributing a price. It's understanding when to do it and how to communicate it. And I think digital mm -hmm. marketing, um, social email, all of those things are really, really important. And it goes hand in hand with you as a revenue manager. So mm -hmm. creating that marketing calendar, understanding when um, money is going to be start to be spent by our OTA partners, when you should start looking mm -hmm. at ads. Um, HSMAI is also offering scholarships uh, to be able to get your CRME uh, certified revenue management uh, executive and then also the certification for hospitality digital marketer. And so for those who have been furloughed or laid off, there's scholarships available where they will waive the application fee. So even if you're not actively engaged with a property right now, there are still things you can do to continue your education, your development, so that you're ready to, to help somebody come out on the other side of this. Mm, yeah, good, good. So, you know, if, if dropping price is not going to drive demand, right? Um, <laughs> what, I mean, what do we need to do as revenue leaders to find places where there is demand right now? What, what can we do? And, and then secondly to that, how do we prepare for the demand that's going to come back? I mean, um, are there specific action steps, um, that we can do or things that we need to do from a collaboration standpoint that makes sense? Yeah, I think, you know, again, um, pricing, you know, everybody's talking about what does normal pricing look like and, and you know, that's not going to change the behavior. However, um, communicating your message, uh, you know, understanding when, when you're looking at your plan to say, okay, how do I open up or ramp back up? Um, when do we start talking about the, you know, virtual vacation, the, you know, we would love to see you to actually booking a vacation, right? You don't want to be insensitive to stay-at-home orders or uh, people's ability to spend money. Um, but I think that the opportunity here is that really when uh, you're looking at your hotel, how do you, you know, package a staycation? Like that staycation, I think, mm. or your business is really going to be literally in your backyard. And, um, you know, step away from traditional packaging where you're, you know, putting in components to a package yeah. that says you have to do this or do that. Be more creative and say, you know what, instead of room service credit or F&B credit in a restaurant that you're not even supposed to be at, um, a picnic lunch or um, mm -hmm. something that, again, allows um, people to experience a vacation away from home, but also um, feel comfortable and safe. Right, you really want that that type of uh, content to be distributed, and then I would also, you know, we all always have these marketing messages where we have discounts on residents and so on and so forth. Um, I would say kind of scale some of those back because as much as I would say don't lower your pricing, I know that you know I see some prices have been you know a lot of markets have lowered their their you know bar, but. You know, on the, on the flip side of that, do you really need a 20, 25% discount for a resident of the state when the only people who can travel are the people in your state? You know, maybe it's 10%, <laughs> right? Or 12% so that you have a call to action for your marketing, you have something you can market, but really you don't need to offer a huge discount if you've already lowered um, some of your pricing to begin with. 
And again, the only people who can come stay with you are the people who are have your zip code basically or live in your state. Yeah. 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 We're, um, we're working with a hotel uh, right now that really wants to put out a divorce package. Oh my gosh. They, <laughs> okay. um, yeah. They think, they think there's going to be quite a lot of that when we come out of quarantine. Um, so uh, I hope not. I hope not. I, I really do. Um, but, uh, you know, I think we do need to think about what do people want coming out of this? I mean, do they, uh, I would love to have, you know, a, a, a girlfriend's weekend somewhere and see all my closest friends and be able to spend some time with them. Right. Um, so, and, and, and I, I don't think that that's necessarily, I know that's not research driven and it's not, necessarily that we've done a survey, but I think we can all think about like, what would we like to do? Yes. You know, would we like to see our families? Would we like to um, be apart from our immediate family? Um, <laughs> I know I'm missing my business travel. I love my family, don't get me wrong, but I really want a business trip really badly. Um, you know, I, I think that, you know, we need to think about creatively and collaborate with our entire commercial team, which is marketing and sales and, um, distribution, like what what can we do that's creative? When I worked for um, Steve Panetti at, at Kempton Hotels, he um, would say to us, I have 200 ideas a day. It's your job as a commercial team to figure out which two are good and which two to pursue. Um, and, you know, I think that we've lost the art a bit of having those 200 ideas a day um, because, I, and I think right now we need to be um, in that creative space. And we, you know, we've had a lot of fun um, collaborating with some of our clients around packages and, you know, what are people going to be looking for and what can we include and how can we make it um, safe and social distanced and, and, and yet make it fun and, and, and make it something that clients want. Um, so I think, you know, to me more than ever, um, you know, we need to be not in our own space. We need to be um, partnering with the other people at our hotels or corporate offices to um, get creative and, you know, and don't have a no face of saying, oh, that's a bad idea. Or, oh, we tried that 10 years ago. Well, you know what? Um, today is not, it's not 10 years ago. I mean, this is a completely new frontier. Um, it's a new journey that we're walking on. And so, you know, I think we really do uh, need to get creative and, and, uh, and, and, and at least, you know, one of the things I always appreciate about working with you is uh, test and learn, test and learn, test and learn. So <laughs> how, how do you suggest, yeah, how do you suggest that revenue leaders um, do that test and learn approach right now? So, you know, for, for us, you need to understand your current baseline and know that it's going to change. Um, you know, for example, as you were saying, you know, the girls weekend and things like that. It's not even um, think about traditional summer summer. You wait until the kids are out of school, right? Well, technically the kids <laughs> are out of school. Like nobody's going to a school or a brick and mortar. And, you know, maybe you are marketing to the people who live 10 miles away who want to get out of their house. And if you're able to yeah. speak to the fact that you have, you know, great bandwidth, right? because I'm sure um, everybody has experienced uh, if you've got, you know, eight users and, or, you know, you've got a TV on and Zooms and all these laptops and iPads and everything going on, um, sometimes you're going to have disruption in, in your, your bandwidth, right? So if that's something that you can give confidence and say, hey, why study at home? Why not have your kids study here and then take them for a walk or take them outside or, you know, shoot hoops at the basketball court or, or anything else but that staying inside your house. Um, again, you don't have to wait for summer messaging to start mid-June. It can start right now. And, um, yeah. you know, so understanding, again, that your booking pace is, is going to change daily. But I, I always talk to if we're going to, so if ownership comes back or anybody says, hey, let's drop rates. Um, talk to, you know, again, what do you expect to get out of it? Are you expecting that you're going to steal share and that your RevPAR index is going to be what? Because right now with as many hotels that are closed or have rooms out of water, um, a lot of people aren't reporting uh, all their data or you don't have enough people who are reporting data to begin with um, to really have a, a fair assessment. So um, 
if you're using STR data as your baseline, understand really what your baseline is. It's not typically not going to be like 100%. Or your RevPAR index change is going to be negative to prior year. So mm -hmm. that whole test and learn is going to be, you're going to have to kind of do, you know, take different classes and, and say, let's look at, do we're going to run this package or we're going to have this email um, offer and we want the conversion to look like this and the revenue per mm -hmm. email. So really sit down and say, you know, this is a change. Even if it looks like it's successful, we don't actually know what success looks like right now. Right. So I recommend changing um, and having different messaging and then create your trends based on what works right now. Because, and again, if, it, if you say, oh, it didn't work two years ago, um, you have no idea it really could work today. Everything you right. throw everything right. out that you've ever done and start over. And as revenue managers, I know that sometimes we tend to um, get really hard nosed about the data, um, but you really need to be collaborative. And every idea, and, and as Carol mentioned, um, there can be 200 ideas out there. Um, you can't implement all 200, but start two now. And then, you know, wait a week, two weeks, and then start something else. Um, yeah, I think I want to stop you there for a moment because I think that's a really important um, point to make. Uh, a lot of people are on a lot of webinars and doing, you know, a lot of listening uh, to a lot of different voices right now. And, uh, you know, I want to throw out kudos to Nicole, who's uh, on today from our team. Uh, one of the most beneficial uh, calls that we attend every week is HSMAI New York City has a Zoom call and, you know, we're all on camera. It's not a webinar, you know, every, you can see everyone and they have different people coming in to talk to us on a regular basis. And a few weeks ago, you know, we still are, are managing a few hotels in New York City. And a few weeks ago she was on and I was on the call, but I had to drop off early and she stayed on and heard about a website that was driving uh, traffic to New York for basically for medical workers. And we had been trying to figure out, you know, where's this coming from? Where's this going to be booked? Like, how can we get a piece of this um, for our hotels? And she heard of it. And, uh, you know, she and Erica uh, worked in the next 24 hours uh, to get that live and get that moving. And we actually uh, filled up two hotels in New York City uh, in five days. Uh, in New York City during a pandemic. Um, so now, was it at a really high rate? No. Um, but did the hotels get to bring some people back? Yes. Um, and did they have more revenue than they thought they had? Yep. And did they have to close either one of the hotels down? No, they didn't. Um, so, you know, you saying 200 ideas, take two and action them. I think it's very important that we actually do something. Um, you know, that we don't just listen and absorb, but that we take action. And so, you know, don't assume that just because someone says something, uh, gives a tip or an idea that it won't work for you or it's not worth pursuing or everyone else that was on that call is going to pursue it. So I'm not going to get anything. Um, you know, I think that um, there's just so much opportunity for us to be aware of what's going on, to be engaged in what's happening in our various markets. And, you know, and I think it is having your ear to the ground um, and, and really being able to, to network and, um, you know, collaborate not only with your hotel, but with your community um, in your market. So we do have a question. Let me yeah. see um, what this question is. So Stephen, I like your question. Thank you, Stephen. Um, everything indicates that demand for leisure business will return first. Great for weekends, not for weekday. Will there be demand for weekdays? How can hotels help shift leisure business to weekday to help even out occupancy curves preventing peaks and valleys? Um, great question. Maybe if everyone keeps working at home, we'll uh, you know have them work from our hotels. I don't know. I don't know. What do you think about that, Elise? And actually, it's, it's interesting is because, um, and it goes to back to that, uh, or the earlier comment that I made, um, I'm starting to see actually, and, and again, it's messaging to people who are working from home, um, who kids no longer have to go to a brick and mortar to go to school. Um, and, and, you know, I've seen, you know, one of the hotels that I'm working with, uh, what's interesting is like, 
their Sunday has become a Thursday. And so um, again, that concept of the staycation, if there's opportunities where you can encourage people to stay longer um, and that, you know, it certainly um, will even out that pattern of stay. But, you know, if, if you need to do some sort of packaging or staycation offer to try and, you know, move demand, um, that absolutely, you know, we understand and, and you know, we've seen that work. Um, but again, you want to you want to actually talk to people because they haven't thought about it. That's that's the other thing, right? Like, my daughter, she gets up, she has breakfast, she starts, you know, looking at her laptop, and she's in school. Well, you know, there's breaks through the day, and, and it's not your typical school. But she could do that anywhere, and she probably would enjoy it more if she was anywhere else but this house right now after two months. Yeah, yeah. So communicating that opportunity that says, you know what, um, your kids can learn from anywhere. Why not here? Uh, I think just getting those people thinking about it differently, because again, traditional summer starts in mid June for most people. Um, it's different. And now, you know, if you really think about it, a lot of corporate America is still closed through the end of May or mid June. So we have some runway here that, if, you know, the stay at home has been lifted or uh, there's still restrictions, but you have to stay inside your own state. Um, I would start marketing to those people right now. What about messaging around uh, people who have booked uh, weekends, uh, at, you know, asking them to add a Sunday, Monday, stay longer? Where do you have to go anyhow? You work from home, you can work from here. <laughs> like, um, you know, and I know that, that offices are going to start reopening. However, um, there are a lot of uh, studies out there that are saying that many companies are going to continue this work from home for those employees that that can and that it makes sense for and that a lot of employees are going to ask for it so uh staggered. you know i think that like i'm not going to work staggered, monday, yeah yeah i'm not going to work monday through friday in the office i'm going to work monday tuesday because i mean think about how corporate america has evolved into this open concept where there's no offices there's no walls right um everything you get to pick your desk when you walk in the door um that's not, yeah that's not something people are comfortable with anymore right uh and so right. if, if you're working you know a different work week um and you're not working five days in an office office environment um again having a, you know and and i would speak to certainly your corporate uh, so if you if you have agreements with corporate uh, clients and you're able to communicate to uh, the people who work for those companies, um, you know, maybe there's an opportunity there, right, that you give them mm -hmm. a specific discounts and so stays, you know, that fourth day or fifth day uh, and encourage them. But you do have mm -hmm. opportunities and, and understand, you know, if, if they're saying, no, we're going to be closed until the end of June. Um, then, hey, can we do a special offer with, with just your company and, and so that they know that they can work from home, but not home, here, right? Yeah, yeah, no, that's good. You know, my husband works for a very large company and they they in, had done just that, they called it hoteling, where, you know, that morning or the day before you could reserve uh, basically a cubicle and come in and work from it, but it's not yours yesterday and it's not yours tomorrow, right? And they've had to suspend that right now. Um, because they have to, in order to reinstitute that, they have to figure out the cleaning procedures and, you know, a, a way to make sure um, that the space is germ free, right? So um, I think that there may be opportunities to look at that of, um, you know, looking at, at people who may, uh, you know, kids are going to be home for a while now. So there might be people who want, um, you know, who definitely want to be somewhere else during their work day. So there might be opportunities for even day use things um, for an, you know, an office. And I have seen some hotels uh, promoting that, but I haven't, I, I don't know that I've seen results that it's worked. Uh, but I think that we're going to have to look at different, a different way of thinking going forward. And my goodness, if schools don't go back in the fall, I mean, people are definitely going to need some uh, uh, break from this. Just something different. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, you know, we're, yep. we're seeing... I, saw a, oh, I, I saw a question come in. Um, oh, so Cody said, speaking as a New Yorker, our apartments are too small for long-term working from home. I see a lot of folks going back to an office here in the city. 
Yeah, um, you know, people definitely are, but, you know, some offices are still closed and they're talking about how long they're going to close. And then there are some employers who uh, can't accommodate all of their employees. Like a lot of the big companies let people work from home anyhow, but now these work from home people have their kids there all day. And they're, you know, so it's, I think they're going to be definitely opportunities for hotel rooms perhaps to be used in a different way in a different manner. Uh, and, and yeah, I, I live in New York too, Cody, and I have, you know, my husband here, me, two dogs, my son, um, it's, and, you know, we don't have the big house that Elise has where we can all have our two rooms to ourselves in, <laughs> in, in Dallas, right? In Dallas. Um, I did see another question come in too, in chat, I believe. Um, so Scott Campbell said, do you think weekend pricing will eventually change with the new work structure you've mentioned and price accordingly to seven days a week and not weekday versus weekend pricing. Absolutely. And, uh, Absolutely. Yeah. And I, I think, think, you know, okay. weekday weekend, I mean, I, I, I'm sorry. I was just going to say, I think that's, an, you know, interesting because we want to be try, pricing to whatever demand is. Right. And so, you know, I think that that is going to even out some, what do you think at least? I do. And, and again, to see some of the, like, you know, the, the one hotel where the occupancy on a Sunday um, was better than Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday kind of thing. And I think, uh, again, the everything that we have thought of traditionally, where this is season is these two weeks or, or six weeks and that uh, Mondays and, you know, Sunday through Thursday versus Friday, Saturday, or um, all of those things I think are, we're going to throw out the window, right? And which goes mm -hmm. back to if you have an automated uh, system, that's certainly going to pick mm -hmm. up on it faster, that booking pace. But yep. that is why, you know, in revenue management, why our jobs are so, so that much more important is because literally things, it's like quicksand. Um, everything's changing. I always talk about us being day traders, um, but we're even more so today because we don't know what's going to happen. Um, based on whatever briefing or whatever comes out in the news um, in, in the evening or what we wake up to in the morning. And so um, we just have to be agile and we have to um, be flexible. And again, the things that we thought for sure we would never do, um, we should give an ear to and at least try and see what happens. But mm -hmm. I, I definitely would say um, don't be committed to uh, your pricing having to be a certain price point because it's a Wednesday versus a Saturday. Uh, demands demand. And I think as you right. start to message uh, to people that they can travel and they can stay um, and understand that this summer, um, while I know everybody talks about our recovery in, in more like 2021 and, and beyond, um, I do know that, for example, summer camps have been canceled, right, for kids. So if, if kids have, you know, don't have the activities, then the people who were working from home are going to want to continue to work from home because they have nobody to care for their children. And again, I can't imagine after two months not already being stir crazy to top another two and a half months on top of it, um, people are, are going to want to do something. Right, right, right. I agree. Hey, there's another qu uh, question here. Let me see. Um, have you heard anything about hybrid meetings that are attended by in-person and virtual participants? If this becomes a new trend, how can hotels get a revenue share on the virtual attendees? Um, that's, a, that's a really good question. We are going to talk a little bit about that next week with Paige, um, but what are you hearing, Elise? Um, yes, that, that is absolutely becoming um, the new, because again, when you're looking at your conference rooms, um, when you have classroom set up or U shape or you know all the things traditionally that we we spoke of, right? You're sitting next to somebody, um, and it's not like we're going to start putting up plexiglass in all of our conference tables, right? So you're going to have to have some of that, and so that goes towards that planning with the finance and the sales team that says, um, do we start charging more? Um, I know that typically what we do is we usually outsource our audio visual, but um, you know, that it's, we're gonna probably have to upscale bandwidth and, and yeah. what does audio visual look like? And instead of having it as a pass through cost, there should be premiums on it. And it's almost like per viewer. And then, you know, um, you know again, I would tighten up those types of attrition because if you're only gonna bring in uh, 30 people and yet virtually you're going to have this meeting for 200, 
um, there's things that you just need to hold them accountable to for whatever revenue drivers you do have. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. Well, we are almost at the top of the hour. Um, and so at least I want to give you one uh, last opportunity to give a, a piece of wisdom and advice. And then I'm going to uh, say goodbye to everyone with a couple of words. So what piece of wisdom would you like to leave everyone with today? Really, I would like you to be stay positive, right? Um, travel used to be what we considered a luxury item. I remember, you know, growing up, our family would save money all year just so that we could go camping um, or stay in a hotel, um, Howard Johnson, right? Uh, something with a pool. But I think that it's a way of life. And, you know, in, in our mm -hmm. day of technology and, and as transient as we are, um, People are going to want to get away and we need to do what we do best, which is be hospitable. It isn't just in, you know, a career choice. It's really in our DNA. So we be positive for our guests, but be, that, be positive for each other, for your teams at your hotels. Um, and, and just know that, um, you know, our recovery is, it's around the corner and some of us are starting to feel it already. But whatever, whatever happens next, you know, I know we hear it all the time, but we are in it all together. And um, we certainly here at Dragonfly are, are here to help support you as well. And um, we want to thank you. I want to thank you uh, for joining us today. So. Awesome. Thank you so much, Elise. Uh, it's such a pleasure to work with you and have you lead our revenue team. And uh, we love your innovation and creativity and as well your, your kindness and how you approach everything and your positivity because you are always positive. So everyone, thank you so much for joining. We've got some great interviews to come next week. I'll be interviewing Paige Dunn. I worked with her for many years at Kempton Hotels and she's part of our team now as well. Jamison Asalta is on in a couple of weeks from Ideas and in four weeks we have Marisa Thompson with Marketing in the Future. We have guests such as Kathleen Collins, Flo Lugley, we have Genevieve Lobos, um, Shalina Dasani. There are a number of different um, people that are going to be coming on as guests, um, as well as the rest of our team. Uh, Erica will be on in June talking about distribution opportunities and systems and integration. And, uh, you know, we're just really excited to meet with you weekly and give you action items, actionable things that you can take away. And that's our goal. We are going to publish these on our Dragonfly Insights page, um, dragonflystr.com forward slash, forward slash insights, I believe is the website that you can uh, get there in, in our website. And these will be out there and available. Feel free to share them. Um, feel free to encourage other people to join and to register. We'd love to have you join us. Uh, and you know, we hope these become even more interactive going forward. Thanks to those of you who made comments and asked questions. And uh, you know, we just want to be a resource for you um, as we all journey this recovery together. Thank you so much. Have a good rest of your week. Bye-bye, see you next week.